it's Leah from ColouringQueen.net and thanks for joining me today to colour this beautiful little dog on holiday from Julia Speary. I hope that you're all uh, doing well today. Seems like a long time since I've done a colouring chat. But I've seen this picture and I thought this might be a, a good time to colour something in and uh, I haven't really felt like colouring the last uh, week or so but I've seen this one and I felt a bit inspired. I was going to do the hammock in uh, like a macrame and Miss Millie is waltzing around so you might hear her little bell or hear her thumping around. But um, I wasn't sure how to do the hammock in Macrame, so I thought, go red. So I chose this picture because it reminds me of my little man, like happy and just always laughing with the tongue out. And so I thought I would tell you about uh, when he was born. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten. I'm using raspberry. People have asked me to say what colours I'm using. So I'll try and remember. Anyway, uh, as most of you know, We had, I first got, uh, I got a little dog for my birthday many years ago from my good friend and it was a little white Maltese terrier and just adorable and because I'm a Betty Boop fan I called him Budgie. And Pudgy is uh, Betty Boop's dog. And then once, one weekend, I uh, I minded my boss's dog, which was also a Maltese. And this is how I fell in love with little Maltese terriers, because I'd minded his dog previously and uh, got very attached. And then, you know, my friend... Got me one for my birthday. And anyway, I minded my boss's dog over the weekend and I had my little pudgy and he was that lonely when his playmate went home that I thought I really should uh, get him a little companion because he cried and Oh, he really, really missed having a little playmate. And uh, he just adored other dogs and he adored everyone. He was, he was just a beautiful little man. And so I'd met David like a year, month or so after I got Pudgy. And... Uh, so he said that he would buy me a little girl dog uh, for my birthday as company for Pudgy. Anyway, years went by and still no sign of this little girl that's going to be uh, Pudgy's companion. And then finally, after about three years of waiting, he was a bit slow with the, the birthday presents, I finally got this little girl dog and so we actually had Pudgy name her. We went through a list of names all based on Betty Boop characters um, and just named her the one that he actually perked up his ears and responded to. So very scientific that was. So anyway, she was named Minnie after Minnie the Moochar, which was Betty Boop's uh, one of Betty Boop's movies, and um, she, 
she was just the most beautiful dog. She was half Shih Tzu, half Maltese. And the very first day, she just fell in love with Pudgy. And, you know, it was just like love at first sight. Even as a little puppy, she just uh, was very super keen on him. You know, too super keen <laughs> for a little puppy. Anyway. We um, wanted her to be de-sexed and uh, we had her booked in but she was too young to be de-sexed and by the time she was of age to get de-sexed, you won't believe it, but she was really in love with Budgie and she was already pregnant so... We took her up to the vets and I said, no, we can't do sex her because she's pregnant. And so she had the most beautiful little puppies. She had five gorgeous little puppies and, oh, God, they were all so cute, little balls of fluff. Now, Pudgy didn't want to be a father at all. He was like, no. Nah. I'm not into this, I'm not being involved, and, uh, you know, see you later. You're a single mum. And he was very uninterested in uh, in all the little puppies. Anyway, she had five gorgeous puppies, and, like, ones were tan, and one was, a couple of were white, and some had little black spots on them. And she was such a fabulous mum. Oh, she was, she just adored those puppies. And of course, everyone I knew ended up with a puppy uh, because, you know, they adored all the puppies as well. So, so that was good. We booked her in and um, to get her de-sexed and she was still only like six months old. But would you believe it? When the time came to get her de-sexed, she was pregnant again. And um, we couldn't believe it that she'd, you know, got pregnant. And by the way, we'd had um, Pudgy chemically uh, castrated. Uh, but, you know, clearly that had worn off or it didn't work properly. Anyway, she had another five puppies and they were just gorgeous. There was like a brown one and there was like a black and brown one, which I've never seen like two sort of basically white dogs have this black and brown one. And uh, I fell in love with him. He was uh, called Tigger. And at that stage, we were living in rented accommodation in a room because our own house was having a massive renovation that was meant to take three months but it took a year and a half. Anyway, I was super attached to this black and brown puppy. Oh, I thought it was the most gorgeous little thing, Tigger. And uh, he's still alive to this day. I sent a photo of him the other day. He's got a new winter coat from his mum. And uh, anyway, I begged David to let me keep Tigger. And he was like, oh no, you know, three dogs. He'll be... Uh, too much hassle and you know we're living in this sort of like room set up at the moment and you know all the rest of it so you know I knew what he was saying was right it was really rough you know where we were surviving <laughs> for the renovation but I still really wanted this dog anyway our human resources manager at the Place where I worked at the time, she um, also wanted him, and um, 
a few of the ladies in the office that I worked at, they wanted his brothers and sisters. And uh, so all of the litter sort of went to everyone that I worked with. And um, over the years, I kept up with all of them and visited them. And even last time I was in Sydney, I visited uh, the one that I called Tigger and they kept his name. I always got the life of Riley now. You know, he lost um, an eye through an eye infection, so he's like a little pirate Tigger now. But he has had the best life. And his uh, brother, one of his brothers went to... David's brother, and uh, he had a wonderful life uh, with David's niece and nephew. And um, one of the others went to a friend of David's, and oh, he had the life of Riley. They, they're a young couple, and uh, instead of having photos of their family in their wallet, they had, you know, photos of their dog and. Uh, he was uh, absolutely spoiled rotten. Anyway, so we booked Millie, um, oh, Minnie. We booked Minnie in again to get desexed. And would you believe it? She was pregnant again. It was like she was constantly pregnant and, um, we really wanted her desex, but we didn't want to, uh, you know, put her through anything, you know, that would hurt her and whatnot. And the the vet said to let her go through with the pregnancy. Anyway, so we did that and, um, you know, we were worried because we never wanted her to have puppies in the first place because, you know, a lot of dogs, you know, are unwanted and things like that. And we just wanted her to, you know, be companionship for Pudgy. So we couldn't, um, you know, do anything about the pregnancy. And I love puppies, so I was kind of happy. <coughs> And so we waited uh, for these, you know, next round of little and last round of little puppies to be born. And from the dates, it looked like the, they were going to arrive on Christmas Day. And during this time, I still hadn't forgiven David for not letting me keep Tigger. I'd actually cried for days at work and remember one of the partners at the place where I worked coming in one day and saying, what on earth is wrong? You know, I need you to do something. And I'm like, oh, you know, she's taken my dog. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, if I go and get your dog back, will you be able to do this work for me? Because, you know, I really got attached to him and I really wanted him. And, uh, I think you guys know me by now that uh, I love animals. I would have, you know, hundreds of animals if I could and, you know, I'd love to, you know, have a, a place that's big enough where I could uh, foster animals or care for animals that have been maltreated or, or just, you know, are seniors and need somewhere to live or whatnot I you know I often say that I like animals more than people and you know it's probably because they never disappoint me and they never you know hurt you or none that I've had anyway so Christmas day I was waiting anxiously for these puppies thinking how cool will this be be the best Christmas present going but um, nothing no sign of any movement from Minnie and uh, then Boxing Day came and I thought 
surely they've got to come today and how cool will this be because you know it's a public holiday don't have to be at work can be at home with me all day and uh, make sure she's okay and uh, I sat at home all day watching her and nothing she was as fat as a house so like being a little shih tzu they often have little round bodies and I used to call her a beach ball on legs but um, she was round as and so full with puppies her little tummy was you know like an inch from the floor and uh, she was that happy and uh, still no sign of any puppies and the next day David went up to the, the shops and he said, keep an eye on Min, make sure she um, is okay. And I was sitting there watching her, and then I realised she was actually giving birth, and she was just, you know, just so easy. It was just like having a glass of water for her. <laughs> and, you know, out came these puppies, and there were four of them. One white, two green, and one uh, black and white and uh, I kept waiting for a fifth one because she'd had five on each litter previously but there was to be no fifth one and don't worry we immediately got her de-sexed uh, as soon as we were able to from the vets this time um, because we didn't want her to, to have puppies at all you know uh, but anyway the puppies that she had were all loved and cared for and not any sort of puppy farm type arrangement or anything like that. They all went to people that we knew and we kept up with the puppies over all the years and I still do with um, Tigger. He's, he still knows me even though he's blind and he still comes to me and uh, when I go and visit him when I'm in Sydney. But anyway, uh, back to the story of the puppies. So knowing that, uh, you know, Minnie was going to get de-sexed, I really wanted to have one of the puppies. And, you know, bearing in mind I'd cried for days about losing Tigger because I really wanted to keep him. I was very attached to that puppy. Anyway, David was still adamant, no puppies. And uh, so I just resigned myself to the fact that, you know, we probably wouldn't end up with a little puppy and, you know, that's okay. And, you know, it was a lot of extra work and whatnot to have a small puppy. But, you know, still so worthwhile. Anyway... After a couple of weeks, Minnie was um, still feeding the little puppies. And one night, she had them downstairs and she came up the stairs and she looked exhausted. And David took her back down and said, you know, no, you've, you've got to go be with your puppies. You've got to go stay there with them. And he'd take her back down and then she'd do this laborious climb up to the top of the stairs again and David took her down a couple of times and said no sweetheart you know you've got to stay with your puppies anyway at two o'clock in the morning she does this climb up again and promptly collapses and I thought, she's not coming up here because she wants to be with us away from her puppies. She's coming up here because she's sick. And so we immediately rang the emergency vet, which, of course, was nowhere near us. And it was the worst trip, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning, going across the Sydney Harbour Bridge in the dark, trying to find this vet on the other side of the city. And... When we got there, there was this receptionist that was just going through the the slow motion of, you know, name and whatnot, and she typed so slow, 
I just wanted to reach over the counter and just do it myself, you know. I was just so frustrated. It was like, just move aside, woman. Let me take over because I could feel I had Minnie on my lap in the car. I could feel that she was really not doing well and I was worried that we were going to lose her. And uh, anyway, we finally got the vet and he was a guy that stutters when he's nervous and uh, he came in and he took one look at me and he's like, and if you can imagine with a stutter, he's like, normally it's not an emergency when people, you know, come in at this time of night because in this case it is. And uh, anyway, he took her away and uh, we were just sitting there for hours not knowing what on earth was going on. It was four o'clock in the morning. And anyway, he came back after a couple of hours and he looked like he'd been through the ringer. He looked so um, worn out and he was stuttering really badly and... And he told us that Minnie had mastitis because uh, she had a calcium deficiency from the puppies draining her dry. And uh, so she was no longer allowed to feed them. But thankfully, she was okay. She had to stay in overnight. And they did a fabulous job of caring for her. And, yeah, it was just fantastic. You know, and we were very lucky that... Uh, you know, we had such a, a great vet there and and that he was available and whatnot to look after our little girl. And so when we got home, she immediately wanted to go and feed her little puppies. And we put them all up in the bathroom upstairs and David built like a wall so that she couldn't get in but even though she was only tiny she kept trying to jump over this wall and she was actually succeeding even though her little tummy was full of milk and everything um so I don't know what I've done with this red here so David had to keep making this wall higher and higher so she couldn't get in to feed her little puppies. But I fed her little puppies and I hand fed them all for weeks and, you know, every day I'd be going in there and they'd be getting fatter and fatter and fluffier and fluffier, gone from looking like little mice and little rats to little fluffy cuteness. So, you know, every day I'd be feeding them and looking after them and she'd be standing outside the perimeter just wanting to get in and to be with them and just busting anything, breaking walls down to try and get in and we'd be pulling her back out again, you know. There was this one puppy, a little white one, and it was a little terror. It got in behind the toilet and it got stuck behind where the toilet meets the wall. And I thought I would have to get a plumber to actually take the toilet out and, um, you know, to get this puppy out that looked like really stuck. And... I did think, though, if I if I could have any of the puppies, it would be this one because I love a cheeky little puppy. I love a naughty little dog, you know. I, I always like the, the cheekiness of it. But uh, I didn't end up uh, needing to get the plumber to get him out. I ended up wiggling him out. <laughs> But uh, it was hard going. Anyway. 
everyone wanted uh, one of these puppies from this last batch. So friends of ours, they actually took, oh, where does this go? I better not talk and uh, colour at the same time until I can figure this out. Oh, I'm never sure. I'll go this way so we can work it out. So friends of ours, I think it's up this way. If I've got these stripes wrong, then I'm going to have to do some white or something to, to figure it out. Is it that way? Mm, I may have got that stripe wrong. I'll go this way and we'll see. Um, so friends of ours, they wanted two of the puppies and they lived around the corner, which was great because then we could, you know, see the puppies. Uh, that was always uh, sort of a thing with us that we wanted to see, that they were being looked after and doing well. So they took the one of the little cream boys and the little black and white girl. They called them Bella and Bart. And they had the most uh, spoilt little life going. Their individual little homemade meals made every day for them. Um, and so cute. And uh, then another friend uh, of the lady that took uh, Tigger, she wanted uh, one of the little cream puppies, a little girl. And people that had already, the young couple, that had taken a puppy from the previous litter, they wanted another one. And so we took over the little white fluffy boy to them. And... Um, they fell in love with them. They already had one little boy from us and they wanted another one. And they're such a lovely, you know, couple and they'd spoiled rotten the first puppy so we knew that they were in good hands and that they were just, you know, lovely people. And... Uh, but they did ask if we could hold on to this puppy for uh, a little bit because uh, we're doing some house renovations and, you know, whatnot. And it, there would be, you know, construction around the house and they didn't want to have, uh, you know, the little puppy in that sort of environment. So we were happy to do that. And the little puppy came over and it got on really well with uh the uh, existing puppy that they had and they said that they were going to call him Charlie and so we brought him back to mind until they could take him and we started calling him Charlie because that was the name that he was going to be known as and, you know, we ended up having him a lot longer than any of the other puppies and I was getting very attached to this little puppy dog. But he was still going over to visit his uh, future parents so I knew that I couldn't get too attached but every time we would go over there, you know, Minnie would cry that she was being, that her puppy was being taken away and she full on cried every time it was just heartbreaking to watch and I was getting more and more attached to this puppy and one night David uh, took the puppy over for a visit while I was at work and it was sitting on the car seat it was when I used to teach at night and it had gone sitting on the car seat over to visit his proposed parents and he was so sweet and quiet and David said, you know, if they end up not taking, you know, this dog, he said, I really want to keep it. 
so sweet and such a gorgeous little dog. I didn't tell him that he was the one that got stuck behind the toilet and caused us all sorts of stress, but <laughs> because I like them naughty. But uh, and David was like really keen to keep the little dog if if it fell through and the other people didn't want him. Anyway, it came time to um, do the handover and I, I went to the shops and I bought him some little toys to take with him, a little lion and a little blankie and stuff so he knew, uh, you know, that he was loved and whatnot. And just before we were about to drop him off, we get a phone call that the people that were taking him she had, she was now pregnant and they felt that with their first child and already a dog that they wouldn't be able to, you know, manage a puppy as well and um, they wanted us to either keep him for a little bit longer or to um, give him up altogether. And so we said, we'll keep him. And because we'd been calling him Charlie for so long, it seemed wrong to rename him and call him something after, you know, Betty Boop to fit with my theme, <laughs> like the other ones. So we kept the name Charlie and it was the best thing that ever happened for Minnie because... She loved that puppy so much. For 10 years, every day, twice a day, she would wash his face. And we thought this was just a phase while he was a puppy, but nope. Every day she would wash his face and she would also wash his little doodle every day for 10 years. And they were inseparable. Poor little Pudgy was left on the outer and it was just uh, Minnie and Charlie against the world. We used to call them the caboose because they were just permanently attached. They'd walk together, you know, in single file with his head really up her butt and <laughs> they were permanently attached. Every night after dinner they'd sit by the door and look out on the domain, just sitting there together. And they were always up to mischief together. Like one day they figured out how to get the kitchen cabinet open where I kept the smackos. And I came home from work and there was a bag of smackos that had been distributed throughout the house and half eaten everywhere. It was just like a carnage of dog treats uh, gone mad but they were always up to mischief together and they were always together and we've said over and over that you know Minnie was born to be a mummy and keeping him was the best thing that we could have ever done for her she doted on him for 10 years you know and until he reached those terrible teens where he thought his mum was a, a pain and he was, you know, rebelling, I guess, in doggy terms. But he just loved being with her and she loved being with him. And he was such a little sweetheart. He was the sweetest little dog ever. He'd sit up on the couch and he would, and Charlie loves to sit on the couch and he'd like to pull my hair for a little bit when we had um, a couch where he could sit on the back and he'd like pull it like he was doing a messy ponytail on my hair and then he would like to sleep on my shoulder with his little head on my shoulder and he'd just stay in that little pose for hours on end.
And every night I used to say that I was reading, going to tell him a story. Because having a little puppy, it's just like having a little toddler. You, you come home and the house has been toilet papered and they're into everything and full of beans. Uh, over night time, him and Minnie and Pudgy too, they'd put themselves to sleep at half past day and they'd all sort of go to their little baskets and just go to sleep. It was like someone blew a whistle or something like that. And every night I'd say to him, when I covered him up with his little blankie, I'd say, you know, let me tell you a story about a gorgeous little puppy dog and I've loved you for every minute of your life. And, you know, David would laugh and he'd go, God, it's the same story every night. I've loved you for every minute of your life. But, you know, I'd been there when he was born. I'd fed him. And I'd had him, you know, for every minute of his life. And so over the years, you know, those dogs, you know, they used to get up to so much mischief. They'd be ganging up on Pudgy and they'd be thinking that was hilarious and he would have to take Pudgy over to David's mum and dad's to have a little bit of a break from those two. And uh, they were always, you know, wanting to play with toys and whatnot. Charlie especially loved little toys like from McDonald's Happy Meals or things like that. So it got so bad that I just started buying them from school fates and whatnot. And so every Saturday when we went out, we'd go to a school fate and we'd come home with one of those little tiny toys and we'd put it in a plastic bag and rattle the plastic bag and he'd jump up and down so excited that he was getting a new toy and, uh, and then he'd run off and that would be his favourite for, you know, weeks on end. And it got so bad that he had so many toys it filled up one of those big uh, construction worker toolboxes that are huge and so what we started doing was we'd go in and we kept all the toys, hundreds of toys that we had for him in one of those toolboxes and we'd grab a plastic bag and put an old one in it and rattle it and pretend it was a new one and he would fall for it every time and he'd think he was getting a new toy but really it was one that he'd had for ages and it was just an old one revisited as we used to say. But otherwise, I think he would have had so many toys. It would be unbelievable. But he certainly loved those little toys. And the thing is, he, you know, he loved toys and he was incredibly sweet but not to other people. And if other people came, he would just bark at them and yap at them and just be generally unpleasant. And so people didn't get to see the sweet side of him that, uh, you know, we seen every single day. Until a few years ago when... I started taking him out a lot more and he was getting used to people and he was starting to like other people and be very friendly and very sweet and they finally got to see the sweet and really loving side to him. And really, we should have called him shadow because every single video that's ever been made on this channel has had Charlie in the background either snoring or under my feet or somewhere 
there's, you know, not a day that he hasn't been in one of these videos or in the room. He follows me around when I have a shower. He's under the vanity watching me have a shower, which is kind of disconcerting. And sometimes when him and Minnie were scared, they would both come actually into the shower with me, both of them being scared of thunderstorms and anything frightening. But, you know, he was just a little adventurer. We went on holidays once and there was a swimming pool with the house that we were renting. And we took uh, Minnie and uh, Charlie with us, of course, and they went on holidays as well. And when we seen the pictures of the house online, it looked like they they didn't have a, a pool fence. And so David was worried that, you know, Minnie or, or Charlie could get into the pool. So as soon as we got there, we went straight to the hardware store and David had researched items to to build like a little temporary fence and he spent two hours out there on a hot summer day building this temporary fence around the pool to make sure that the the dogs couldn't get in and Minnie being just like a little sumo wrestler, a little beach ball on legs really, she just walked straight over his fence and straight out into the pool area and Charlie being a little adventurer he just jumped straight into the pool and we heard this splash and there he was having a swim. <laughs> so all David's hard work was for nothing. But luckily Charlie was an excellent swimmer and uh, he had a good time. But after his mummy left, you know, he became even more part of our lives and we took him everywhere with us. There really wasn't a place that he wouldn't go. And even when I do grocery shopping, he would be in the car with David waiting and I would just go in and get the stuff. It was very rare that we would leave him on his own. And if we did, we'd always put his favourite TV show on, which was Midsummer Murders. He liked to sit up on the couch and watch that and bark at certain things. So he was never really alone. And last year when we got Millie, I never thought that he would find someone that he liked to spend time with as much as his own mummy, um, Minnie, not me. He was always with me, under my feet, around me, wherever. But when we got Millie, I thought he would maybe attack her. But instead, he was incredibly curious about her and if we'd taken him out somewhere, the first thing that he would do is run in and check to see where Millie was and, you know, then stand by her or, or bark it if she was hiding in a drawer or something that he couldn't get to. He'd bark at it until she came out. In the first few days, he just spent looking at her with this little smile that he was always doing, always smiling with his little tongue hanging out. And he spent days just looking at Millie when she first arrived, going, what is this curious little creature? Very weird looking, but looks okay. And then they got to be friends and... Every morning, Charlie would come up to Millie 
while I, they were waiting to be fed and he would give her a little kiss on the lips and she would kiss him back and then she'd turn around and stick a tail in his face and he would laugh his head off and smile. And it was just this thing that they did every day and it was quite funny to watch. And then they had this other little system that they'd get together to ask for a snack or something and they were just becoming quite inseparable as well. And uh, wherever Minnie would sit, Charlie would sit under her during the day, so he was always with her, as many of you know. We lost Charlie. He collapsed and we uh, rang the emergency vet and by real luck we found ourselves at the specialist hospital which was uh, you know top of the range technology place that was uh, 15 minutes away from us and we were able to uh, take him there but due to uh, coronavirus only one of us was allowed in and uh, I had thought you know when I rang and they told me that only one person was allowed in I thought they meant to the consultation room I didn't realize that it was even the waiting room so uh, because I'm not good with medical things we decided that David would be the one uh, that went in and I was uh, you know told to leave the waiting room so I leaned over and I I gave him a kiss and told him I'd loved him for every minute of his life which is the same thing I've told him every night And then they took Charlie out the back because due again to coronavirus, they couldn't even be in a consult room with the um, puppy and with uh, their owners. So Charlie went out the back and they told us to go home and they would call us uh, in a couple of hours. And when we got home, they called us within an hour to let us know that he had some heart problems with fluid on the heart and they were draining it and uh, doing everything that they could, which we authorised them to do everything that they could. And it's actually a feeling like that there was a bit of positivity and hope happening there. But uh, as soon as we um, hung up from the vet that had given us an update, she immediately rang back to say that his condition had been worsened and, uh, you know, that we wouldn't make the 15 minutes uh, way to get there to say goodbye. And not only uh, wouldn't we make it, but also due to the virus and all the restrictions in place that we wouldn't actually be allowed uh, in. Because I don't go out a lot, the impact of COVID-19 hasn't really hit me in, until last week. I go, you know, we'll wear a mask and I'll safe distance when I'm out, but I'm really out at all. I spend most of my time at home and, uh, you know, this was the first time it's actually really hit me, the impact on this virus and how it affects, you know, everyone. So anyway, this is the way I always remember my little boy. Always happy, always smiling, waiting to get a treat, sitting by my feet. trying to get Kat to smile and 
walking around the garden like Dora the Explorer, which is what we always used to call him. Had a few different names for him, Charlie, Barley Sugar, Charlie Brown, Bugalogs. But one of our favourites was Dora the Explorer because he just liked to walk around the garden that is a half done landscaping tip but at his little height you know it was pretty exciting and always something to see new every day and he'd do a loop of the house and then he couldn't remember which way the front door was and which way to get back but we thought that was pretty charming actually we thought pretty well everything he did was pretty charming and pretty cute So I do want to thank everyone that's reached out to me uh, via messenger. I know that um, <clears throat> I haven't answered all of my messages. I, I will be getting there and I do appreciate it. I really do. And uh, David does as well. And I do want to um, let you know that even though I might not have responded as yet, uh, I certainly do appreciate it and um, I'm really thankful that you took the time to either comment or message me or, or send your support. What uh, David and I hadn't been aware of or, or hadn't really thought about was that how hard uh, Millie would take it. She's been um, extremely distressed and I've been worried sick about her because this time last year she had that uh, bladder thing, I can't remember what it's called now, urinary thing where she bleeds. Um, when she's stressed out and so I've been trying to do everything I can to uh, keep her calm but she hasn't slept in days and she keeps roaming the hallways uh, looking for him and I've spent nights up trying to you know pet her and comfort her and you know, so that she'll sleep properly because uh, for a cat she's not getting her daily allowance and hasn't slept for days and last night was uh, one of the first nights that she's actually got a few hours sleep. So I'm hoping that she's um, on her way to, to feeling a little bit better about not having a playmate anymore. But we were kind of stunned that she's, because I sometimes call her the Snow Queen, and cats aren't renowned for being, you know, overly fond creatures. So we are kind of stunned that she's uh, so distressed and roaming around and she can't settle and she keeps getting up and down and she can't sleep and... You know, so I hope that uh, she's uh, she's turning a corner and that she's she's going to uh, start feeling a little bit better soon because uh, we you know do adore her and we certainly wouldn't like her to be in any discomfort and whatnot. It's terrible when you see your your pets. So. In any sort of discomfort but anyway uh, I'm going to finish this up off camera but I did want to make sure that I reached out and thanked everyone for the support and for thinking of me and David and Charlie and Millie and it really means the world to me and I will see you next time until then, please stay safe and happy gardening.